I'm Levi with Loader Park Stores in uh, Northern Indiana, in Elkhart, Indiana. And I'm here to talk about charge pressure today because we had a gentleman call us yesterday about a problem in the machine related to his charge pressure. And in explaining it, I realized even some of our own people here don't really understand it as good as they could. So I'm going to jump in and talk about how charge pressure works in your hydrostatic transmission, specifically in a tandem hydrostatic transmission, like a skid steer loader that has a right side and a left side. But this is just generic information that's good across the board for anything hydrostatic. So, <clears throat> it might seem like a funny place to start, but the first thing you have to understand to really get how charge, what the charge pressure reading means to you is flow is not pressure. When you have flow, that doesn't equal pressure. Pressure doesn't come from flow, it comes from restriction to flow. So think about this. You're pedaling a bicycle downhill. You don't have a lot of pressure on the pedals. You might be going pretty fast because there's not a lot of restriction. Now, you're pedaling the bicycle uphill. You might have a lot less flow, a lot less speed, but also a lot more pressure because the flow, the speed, is not dependent, um, isn't related to the pressure. The pressure is related to the restriction. If you're going uphill, there's a lot of restriction. If you're going downhill, there's not so much. And that's what affects the pressure. The speed is just like the flow, not related to the pressure and the restriction. I hope that's not too confusing because that's the basis. If you don't get that yet, pause the video, think about it a little bit. Here's another example. In a garden hose at home, you're watering the flowers with no nozzle on the hose. There's not a lot of pressure. But when you put a restriction on the end of the hose, the hose tenses up and gets hard because the restriction to flow creates the pressure. Okay, now you got that. Put it on hold uh, on the side. We'll come back to those ideas in a little bit. In a hydrostatic system, it's hydrostatic. It's fluid that's trapped. And it, it's a closed loop. The oil circulates back and forth between the drive pump and the drive motor. Uh, the faster you're going, the faster it circulates. If you're going the other direction, it circulates the other direction. So you see those arrows, that oil is going both ways. It's carrying all the power from your engine to your wheels. In a skid loader, there's two sides, so you have a right and a left. But it's not quite that simple because efficiency isn't 100%. So you have some leaf off, you need that for lubrication, you, uh, you need cooling as well. So these motors have flushing valves in them to allow some of the hot, dirty oil to escape and get replaced by clean, filtered, cooled oil. So I want to talk about the charge system. And it's a little tricky because you've got these drives, the hydrostatic drive, the closed system where the oil circulates back and forth. Some of it leaks off. That leak off oil is replenished by the charge system. The charge system is an open loop system, meaning it goes through the tank before it gets back to the pump. It does its work, it goes back to the tank. I omitted the filters and the oil coolers because those aren't part of understanding how this works, and they're in different places on different machines. But to now talk about the charge system, it sucks oil out of the tank, it pushes it into the drive loop through the replen uh, replenishing valves inside the pump and it either leaks off or is bled off by the charge pressure relief valve in the pump or it leaks off or is bled off by the flushing valves in the motors and it completes that circuit back to the tank.
Get it? I think you guys got it. So what about my charge pressure? Well, you go back to that flow idea. If there's no restriction, there's no pressure, it flows right on through. You know, if something's completely broken, it just flows in, flows out, and it doesn't have any pressure. If there is no damage anywhere, there's no place for the oil to go, and the pressure would get so high that it would break the charge pump or damage some hoses or something. So there's a relief valve to set the pressure at a certain point. And say you've got five gallons of charge flow, if two gallons of it are leaking off, the remaining three gallons is going out through the relief valve. What's tricky is it's combined with all the other oil, you can't really measure which of it is supposed to be leaking off and which of it is not supposed to be leaking off. But we have the charge pressure that we can measure. Um, I'm not telling you where to measure it in this video. We got another one out that tells you where to measure it. What I am trying, the point I'm trying to make is the more restriction you have to your charge flow, the higher your charge pressure is up to the relief valve setting. And if there's damage somewhere in the system that decreases the restriction to flow, it escapes to the tank and it lowers your drive pressure. So what we do when we're diagnosing a transmission is we pinpoint where the leak off is happening. Is it happening in the pump? Is it happening in the motor? Is it happening on the right side? Or the left side, is it happening in forward or reverse? And then we can have a very good idea, seldom 100%, a very good idea on which component should be replaced. Or is there just a simpler problem, perhaps? That saves a lot of money in shipping and replacement costs and a lot of downtime. So it's very helpful for us to get this right before we start taking parts off. So now, going back and sitting inside your machine, whatever symptoms it has, I don't know, we haven't talked, but you've got a charge pressure gauge hooked up. Your, the machine is running, you have a charge pressure reading, and now we're going to see what affects the charge pressure reading. What makes it go down? If you move your right hand lever forward, with the parking brake set, or if you don't have a parking brake, maybe you just uh, run it into a pile of dirt or something, that increases your drive pressure. If there's damage inside the pump or the motor and the drive pressure increases, more oil leaks off through those damaged areas. When more oil leaks off, there's rest, less restriction to charge pressure, charge flow, and there's lower charge pressure. That's your clue. Hey, when I push the lever forward on the right side, the charge pressure drops. When I pull it in reverse on the right side, and the charge pressure drops to the same point, but it doesn't do it on the left side, then you know there's a problem on the right side. You still don't know if it's a pump or a motor problem, but you know it's a problem. So what we typically do then is we disconnect the motor hoses, put plugs in here, and if the pressure stays up when we re redo the test, pushing the lever forward or reverse, the machine thinks the brake's locked because the oil can't go anywhere, the wheel can't turn, and this is how it feels to the machine. When we do that, if the pressure stays good, we know it's not the pump, so that infers it has to be the motor. There's some other stuff we can find out too, but that's the basic idea. So now I want to get into a more advanced situation our customer had. This customer had 400 PSI of charge pressure at full throttle and 315 at idle. Well, that's a problem. Uh, in my rule of thumb experience, this won't apply to all machines, but generally speaking, after doing this for 30 years, 
if you're dropping more than 50 pounds between full throttle and idle, you have a problem. If it's lower than that, yeah, you might have a problem, but it's generally not bad enough to cause concern yet. In this case, it was dropping off 85 pounds, so that's my first clue there's a problem. But what's interesting about this customer is when he moves the lever, he didn't do forward and reverse, he just did once for each side. So I'm working with the information I have. Uh, that was in neutral, he had 315 at idle. But in, when he moved it forward, it only dropped to 308. When he moved the other side forward, it only dropped to 310. At full throttle, he started at 400. Similar results, uh, it dropped five pounds to 395 on one side, 10 pounds to 400 on the other side. So what that tells me, it's only dropping five or 10 pounds when he puts a load on it. There's nothing wrong with the pumps and motors. But it does drop a lot when the RPM drops. And that's because when the RPM drops, the charge pump's pumping is turning slower and is pumping less oil out. So when you have uh, a system that this motor, on a lot of machines, this motor will leak from one to one and a half gallons. This one will leak one to one and a half gallons. The pump will leak uh, three gallons under full load. So there you have a combined six gallons of leak off under operation. If the pump's putting out seven gallons, everything's good. The relief valve's open, everything's good. But when you idle the machine down, and to where you have six gallons or less, that's where your charge pressure stops to drop, or starts to drop. So what happened to this guy that really tripped him up is he had, he hadn't checked his, I don't know how much he checked, but we hadn't talked about his charge pressure this much yet. And he disconnected the motor, the charge pressure went back up, so he assumed the motor was the problem. Well, yes, the charge pressure went up because the replenishing flow isn't leaking off. If he would have connected it back up and disconnected the other motor, I believe the same thing would have happened. The charge pressure would have went back up. What's happening here is there should be enough charge flow at idle to still maintain your charge pressure. It should just drop. 10 to 15 pounds between high idle and low idle. This dropped 315, so it's not a leak off problem, it's a flow problem. The charge pump itself is got damaged. It was a brand new one, so it really threw the guy off because he wasn't expecting a new pump to have problems. Uh, but that's what the numbers tell me because if there was damage in the pump, if there was damage in the motor, and you apply higher drive pressure to it, it takes 1,500 pounds just to make the machine go on, uh, on the flat surface. But if you put 5,000 pounds on it when you have the brake locked, your leak off is going to increase proportionally. So you're gonna have a lot more leak off under pressure and this guy doesn't have any more leak off under pressure. So these components are good and it's the, the leak off inside here looks like this. It's just internally leaking back here. You don't see it, but it's not coming out here. So you do have less flow and then you fall below your relief valve setting quicker and it drops off quicker. I hope that's helpful. Please ask any questions. I'll get on here every couple days and answer them. Uh, it's very beneficial for us if our customers have a clue how their charge pressure works. And ideally, it'll help you out uh, with diagnosing your own things. One last thing I want to talk about, I almost forgot it. Uh, we've had this a number of times. <clears throat> the OEM dealers are some of the worst on this one. 
stretch shuttle valves, so I'm kind of shifting gears here, but it affects the charge pressure. There's shuttle valves in the drive motors. The shuttle valve functions to, if there's pressure on this side, it connects this side to the case drain and vice versa. If there's pressure on this side, it moves over here and connects the other side to the case drain. So the low pressure side, regardless if you're going forward or reverse, is connected to the case drain. That's the purpose of the shuttle valve. In neutral, neither one of them is connected. So what happens on some machines, the neutral isn't quite set correctly. You've heard this, you're walking by the machine, it's just prowling a little bit, but the parking brake's set and it's not walking anywhere. And there's so many machines out where it's off just a little bit, nobody even thinks about it. But in that situation where the machines are nee, just whining a little bit when it's sitting there in neutral, the shuttle valve is shifted and it's open to the replenishing valve and it's leaking off uh, one to one and a half gallons a minute of oil. And what happens, somebody understands well where there's leak off, there's a problem. They take this hose off, they put it in a bucket and they say, wow, that's really gushing out of there. A quarter inch hose in one gallon a minute spits oil out like this. They call us up and they say, hey, my drive motor's fed. We send them a new one and they call back and say, hey, my new drive motor's fed. All because they weren't certain that they had put their transmission perfectly in neutral. Um, so th that you'll see that if you're playing with your charge pressures here. Uh, you can see the charge pressure drop slightly when you move your levers right out of neutral or maybe you even have to pull them back against uh, the centering springs a little bit to get them into neutral if it's an older machine and not adjusted perfectly anymore. What else am I forgetting? Yeah, I could ramble a while, nobody benefits from that. I'll just answer questions when they come up. Have a good afternoon, I hope that's helpful.